Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jason Williams, also known as the Cloud Gardener. Today is a really special day because I get to tell you all about my latest project. I am going to be creating a show garden at the RHS Tatton Park Flower Show and it is going to be a ginnel or an alleyway garden. Through lockdown, we've seen a rise of people using their alleys or ginnels as a brand new way of gardening. Some are solo projects, whereas others are more of a community project. From pollinator plants to growing your own veg, there are no limits with these small spaces. Like most community projects, money is an issue and these gardeners are so resourceful in their use of upcycling items to create their own unique spaces. I'm going to be using my platforms to highlight their creativity as well as making sure that every visitor to the garden will leave with some ideas that they can implement in their own garden. But you know me guys, I'm going to keep it real with you. Alleyway gardening is amazing but there are also some challenges so throughout the next few weeks I'm also going to be taking the time to share some of those challenges. Now. Once the show is over, the garden is going to get relocated. So let's check out where the garden is going. Today I'm here in Mossside and this is going to be the alleyway where the Ginnel Garden is going to be relocated. So let me take you around and show you just what the alleyway looks like right now. Now this was recorded in late April. Throughout winter the garden is left to fend for itself but I still find real beauty in the fact that nature has taken over this ginnel. The largest problem with ginnel gardens is the fact that sometimes residents along this street are not here on a permanent basis. Sometimes social housing can be transitional but also people's lives change. Their work schedules childcare routines and life just gets in the way and if two or three of the main players suddenly have these life changes it means that the garden can quite quickly go into dilapidation that's why I've committed to mentoring this community for the next year just to provide that level of consistency so that the garden doesn't go into disrepute and as you can see they have all of the basic elements to have a beautiful space I just need to find a way to enhance what they already have. This space is so important to the community. Most of these residents here have a small courtyard that's even smaller than my balcony. Others have extensions, which means that they just have a pathway in their own back garden. This is legitimately the only outside space that these residents have. And I don't just mean the human residents. In fact, this little tortoise comes outside for his daily stroll. Its owner has decided to use her space to grow as much food as she can for her pet. Now, there's going to be a lot to do to get this alley ready for the show. So it's a bit daunting, but believe it or not, that's not the only alley in this area. In fact, there are several groups who really utilize their ginnel spaces. So let me take you to another one and show you what that one looks like. This ginnel has more of a permanent resident base and as you can see the difference is tremendous. There are more families with children on this ginnel but their use of colour throughout the garden is so fun and uplifting. Their interpretation of gardening is different, it's a little bit more weed free and between the group they are able to allot a little bit more time and and energy to their ginnel. I met one of the residents here who is a handyman and some of his work is seen throughout the garden but the residents on each ginnel don't tend to interact so I'm hoping that the ginnel garden will help to bring the street together but also help to forge links between these other ginnels to really make the community whole again. I'm here at a park which is pretty nearby the Ginnel. Um, I'm going to do some measuring because this garden 
is going to have its challenges. It's going to be 40 meters long and three meters wide. <laughs> and it's going to have fences all the way along. But the issue with the garden is that because the fences are in essence the back of other show gardens it means I can't drill through because I can't affect somebody else's garden because it, it could essentially affect their marks through judging so essentially everything for this Ginnel garden has to be at ground level now the other caveat is we need a walkway through this garden and due to health and safety and accessibility the walkway has got to be two meters wide so that means i have got 50 centimeters on either side i cannot drill into the fences and it's 40 meters long Right? Oh, well, if you say so. Anyway, <laughs> listen. So, what I'm going to do today is um, I am not a visual person. So, I can draw 40 centimeters on a piece of paper, and that's cool, but it just it doesn't really compute in my head. And the point with my Chelsea show garden where things began to make sense to me was when I finally had all of my containers, I had everything all together and I could phys physically see that garden um, and that's when you know everything was brought to life. So this time around I'm going to do that way before I even get to the container stage just so I can visualize and see. So I'm here at this park, start measuring out 40 meters and yeah It'll be fine. If you have a shot for every time I say it'll be fine, uh, <coughs> you're going to need to be carried back home in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> I started off by measuring out the three meters and then also marking out the 50 centimeters on each side. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. No, no, because look. Yikes. Finding containers and veg troughs that are 50 centimeters wide is going to be a tough ask. The next step is to measure out the 40 meters. Oh my fucking God. Yeah, so part of my French guys, but yeah, it would seem that 40 meters is uh, is, is pretty big. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listen, you guys, I told you that this is going to be warts and all. You're going to see it all. So I, I knew it would be big, but like... Okay, so you may notice it's gotten dark. Can't lie, I had a little bit of a sit down and a rethink, and I think I think I need to find a way to make the space just just a little bit bigger because that is it's a lot. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It's times like this where my mind can sometimes take over. My anxiety and imposter syndrome leads me to believe that I'm out of my depth and that I can't do things. I took myself on a walk just to try and calm myself down 
and think about things properly. But most importantly, remember why I'm doing this project. It's to help the community. As you can see, the houses here don't have front gardens at all. So small little alleyways like this are the only form of outside space that some of these houses may actually have. So if they don't use their ginnel spaces, you'll find that the children will be playing out on the streets. When in fact, it will be safer for them to just play in a safe communal space. The whole area is just full of lots and lots of different ginnels and some are more loved than others. So if we can just galvanise the community to get together, hopefully that will inspire more people to use their ginnels in the same way that we're planning to use ours. Funnily enough, you leave that estate and then you see that actually the houses get bigger, they have outside space and they have gardens front and back. I can't afford to fall at the first hurdle. Not only are we going to be growing some beautiful flowers on the garden, we're also going to be growing food. I've invited a local refugee charity to help grow some food from other countries to help bring the refugees that live on this ginnel into the community and really show how gardening has the power to connect us all together. So although this may have freaked me out a little bit, <laughs> I'm still in positive spirits. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed the first part of my RHS Tatton Park Flower Show series. In the next episode, we're going to be talking more about the design. We're going to meet some of the community where the garden is going to be relocated to. And once again, there may or may not be some issues that may creep up on this garden. And of course, I'm going to be bringing you all of the tea. So hopefully I'll see you next week for the next episode. Bye. In the next episode, I'm going to introduce you to the community and take you behind the scenes and show you the process of designing the space. And then I'm going to take you over to Gorse Hill and show you another set of Ginnel Gardens, which are truly inspirational. So hopefully you are going to join me next week and I can't wait to see you. <laughs> hopefully I'll see you again soon. Bye.